All right. All right. Hello, everyone. Before we begin, I'd like to seek a motion for approval of the minutes from our last meeting in March. Could I get a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks, guys. So moved. Uh, Bronxville is bustling this spring. There are so many exciting things happening in our community. Principal Mercora is going to start off the meeting by telling us about some of them. And he's also going to tell us about the important milestones that our children are passing in their classrooms. Mr. Mercora. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. I know it's a beautiful night out and thank you so much for time out of that night to be here with us. I'm just gonna share my screen for a moment and uh, just kind of do a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation to uh, get you guys up to speed on things that are happening in the wonderful district. Let me just uh, come out of this one second. And what I wanna do is admit all these great people that are meeting. And Alana, I'll make you a co-host just so you can let some people in if I'm talking and stuff at the same time, okay? All right, so let me get back to my screen. All right, thank you so much everybody for being here with us this evening. Just some quick updates about things that are happening. And as Alana mentioned, there are some wonderful events happening every single day. And we certainly want to uh, celebrate these events that are happening. Uh, we've had an amazing good old fashioned book fair uh, this week. And uh, it was just wonderful. A big shout out to Megan Paisley and the amazing volunteers that went into that. It was so nice for me and for the teachers and students just to see everyone coming back into the building and, and just getting to meet so many parents and this week. So thank you. Book fair was always a special event, I'm sure. But everybody was pretty much commenting on how it was just a little more special even uh, today, this this year, because we hadn't been able to do it in this way in a long time. Uh, Story of Pirates Assembly was wonderful. We had a great second grade event. You are special to me day. And it was just very special to meet a lot of our special someones of our second graders. Uh, two weeks ago, the International Fair was incredible. It was just a great experience. So many of our elementary families were present. It was great to see so many of you there. The art show is upcoming. Uh, next week, forward to that. Kids are very excited about the play for some of our third graders. I'm very excited about our Memorial Day festivities that'll be happening in Bronxville. I have been given a great honor. Uh, I will be one of the judges of the uh, uh, dog parade uh, that's coming and I'm really looking forward to doing that and uh, very honored by the PTA to ask me to do that and I'm looking forward to it. You may remember, uh, about a couple of months ago, we were talking about a great parent-led committee called this committee that was just looking to bring smiles and to the more smiles to our schools, children and staff faces and uh, their work. Uh, the students were able to kind of gather and vote a little bit on all of the things that they wanted to see. And uh, lo and behold, we've come up with an incredible list of activities for our students that were going to start happening next Friday. Everything from having a DJ uh, recesses to um, having students um, come in crazy hat day, crazy hair day. Tomorrow is part of our uh, principal's newsletter. You're going to be getting a calendar that's going to take you through the first four weeks of it. And I'll be sending daily reminders as well. Just events that are spirit driven. And we want our students to continue to be happy and want their voices to be heard. Um, we have a lot of end of year class celebrations that are coming and giving you a schedule with those tomorrow as well as part of uh, principal's newsletter. And again, we're getting ready. I just a big shout out always to our fifth grade. Fifth grade moving up is coming and all great things with uh, our fifth graders. And we're so proud of them as they move up to middle school. But, you know, we're going to make these let this last month that we have with them, these last six weeks that we have with them very special as well as they gear up to moving up. Um, there's great happenings, great spirit, and just great, great things happening in our school. Uh, but I, I always our top priority and number one priority beyond the happiness of your children is to making sure that that education continues. So with that being said, um, we have um, some great things happening. I'll start with kindergarten. Kindergarten in their ELA reading is building their reading stamina using different strategies and building what we call vowel power. 
Um, writing, we're finishing our how-to books and about to begin persuasive writing unit. Uh, math, we're solidifying their understanding of number operations. We're adding and subtracting with fluency up to five, solving story problems. And the kindergartners have gone on trips to Muscoot Farm and the chicks are back. We're having our chick hatching project and we're looking forward to those chicks hatching and all the special memories that that will bring to our students' kindergarten experience. First grade. Uh, hard at work. The math, uh, with math, the students are learning to identify coins. They're also adding numbers within 100. Uh, ELA, incredible writer. Their uh, students are writing fiction series books. They develop their own character and introduce that character in book one of the series. And, uh, they are reading fiction and paying close attention to the characters and their relationships with other characters in the book and the lessons that they learn. And they too enjoyed a nice trip to Muscoot Farm, which went very well. And we're very proud of them and all the work they're doing. In addition to going to Muscoo Farm as well, our second graders in math are adding and subtracting three digit numbers with and without regrouping. And for us that went to school a little while ago, regrouping uh, is what we called uh, borrowing or carrying numbers. Um, so regrouping uh, is when you make or fix a funny number by shifting it, shifting 10 or 100 and back, we used to call it carrying and borrowing numbers. So that's what they're doing right now. In ELA, they're doing some fascinating work studying and building long and complex words in phonics. This unit has a strong focus on analyzing vowel teams. Um, and during their reading time, the second graders are engaged in many book clubs. They're analyzing character development. Um, they're using what they discover about books and uh, to form and support opinions about books during writing time. So great work there. Third graders, um, they are doing a lot of research and a lot of analyzation. So just some examples, they're comparing and contrasting two animals. Um, they're looking at multiple sources and how to synthesize notes from multiple sources. Some exciting work happening. Uh, they'll be learning about the cultures of India, Brazil, and South America. These countries are tied into some work they'll be doing in June. And in social studies, they've been exploring the guiding question, to make us similar and different. And never before was that seen in action by the students that when so many of them attended our international cultural fair, it was a great experience for them. And it was really all their learning that they will be doing in motion and seeing it uh, from the various old of great people from Bronxville. And that the students are expanding their learning and they're actually exploring and getting ready for fourth grade topics. Just to give you some examples, they um, reviewed fractions, comparison of fractions, common denominators and um, et cetera. And this week we've really been focusing on naming fractions of a set and improper fractions. Fourth grade, they did a great, they're in the process of with uh, working great walking tour of Manhattan where they're seeing various historical sites. The fourth grade is beginning their study of fiction in reading and writing. And it's also integrated with their social studies unit on immigration. They are currently in math working on a decimal unit, and they'll be actually after that focusing on fifth grade work, getting them ready for that next level. And the fifth graders are soon to be moving up graduates in math. The students are working and on getting ready for sixth grade. Uh, their unit currently exploring a unit which reviews topics previously taught and covers some new concepts that they'll see in the sixth grade. The LA are in fantasy book clubs and working on writing a fantasy novel. Um, we are having our virtual Philadelphia trip and our in-person splashdown trips coming up, and we're looking forward to that. And our capstone project, Be the Change, uh, is also coming up as well. And we're looking forward to sharing that experience with uh, families as well when they come in like they used to. So all great things going on and uh, great things to happen and many thanks to all. And it's really going to be my pleasure now to turn it over to who I call the heart and soul of uh, Bronxville Elementary School, and that's the team of Vastola and Miss Adams, who are phenomenal to work with each and every day, and it's just been an honor to work with them. So I'm going to turn it over to them right now for a great topic. So uh, Miss Adams. Good evening. Um, Mr. McCora, can you allow me to share my screen? You are good to go, Miss Adams. All right, thank you. Okay. You guys see my screen? Thumbs up. Okay, good. 
so good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today, this evening. Um, I have the lovely pleasure of speaking about a very difficult topic, um, which is uh, conflict and concerns when your students bring concerns home. Um, you know, I'm very sensitive um, and cognizant of how difficult this can be, especially as a parent myself. I know how it can be for um, your kiddos to come home upset over things. Uh, and so I'm happy to talk about that a little bit. I spend a good portion of my day at times speaking with your children. So um, as a parent myself, but also as uh, the assistant principal, I'd like to just share some tips on how to collaboratively kind of get through some of these difficult things at home. So um, a great approach uh, that I would offer to parents is utilizing our DBT skills. Uh, which is listening and validating. So you want, if your student comes home and they're upset, the first thing you want to do is listen and validate your student's emotions. So if anything happened at school where they're upset, you want to be able to say, you know, I, I, I hear you and I understand how difficult that must be and how, how upset you feel. Um, and you also want to gain clarity of the situation, what actually happened, right? So walk your student through what, what really occurred. Um, and for us at school, which is a great opportunity to bridge over at home, is utilizing our DBT language of emotion mind, fact mind, wise mind. So were you in emotion mind? Your students definitely know what you'll mean. They may even be surprised if you say emotion mind, but uh, they know what you mean when you say emotion mind, right? Their feelings. Were you, what were your feelings in that moment? And then gather the facts and then use our wise minds to think ahead of what we could do differently. Um, I think as parents, it's also really important to identify or delineate the difference between bullying and a conflict. I'll, I'll share a little bit more of that on the next slide. Um, but specifically bullying is very, it's aggressive, repeated behavior, very targeted and specific to a spe like a specific student. It could be in a very specific or particular area of the school or something going on, but it's very targeted and happens over time. And it's almost like a pattern in a sense. Um, and then there's conflict, disagreements or arguments that happen, right? Um, and in the next slide, I go a little bit more into meat, a little bit into meanness as well. Um, but for me, when I talk to students, it's real, that's something that I do is really take the time to listen and hear for what exactly, what type of problem or situation are we dealing with? Um, and in uh, Bronxville, we have a very dynamic program called um, Don't Wait to Unmake a Bully. And there's also the uh, Unmaking the Media Sphere, which has um, been a part of the school since 2018. Uh, and it's a great anti-bullying program that we've partnered with where students create PSAs on uh, the importance of awareness around bullying, upstanding and bystanding. Uh, so students experience a range of activities and they're encouraged to think critically and problem solve through these social uh, situations and what they would do. And then they, they share these videos with their peers. So while the fourth graders get this really special activity, they also get to share their videos out with the kindergarten, nursery, fifth grade. So everyone sees the videos and they're actually really meaningful. They're great ways to kind of help kids work out tough situations. Um, so on the next slide, uh, this is a nice little tool that I use. I kind of always keep in my back pocket to help me. And I think parents might really appreciate this. It's the difference or the differences between peer conflict versus meanness versus bullying. Um, peer conflict really is an argument or a disagreement. There's equal power between the kids. Like they're, you know, they could be on the same grade, um, and you know, eventually they realize that they kind of hurt their friend. And um, there's an example, I can share these slides out so you can look at this more like on your own time if you'd like. Um, there, there's meanness. Meanness can be subjective um, and motivated by angry feelings, right? So something, you know, the, the example they have is that Anthony says that he can't play four square during recess because he's the worst player in the whole third grade, right? Like this happens and your kids come home harboring these feelings and it's really upset, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a bullying moment. That was a mean moment. A kid definitely said a mean thing in that moment. Um, and we want to be able to talk our kids through that, right? So again, validate their feelings, but then also help them understand, okay, so you were in your emotion mind when Mary said that, 
right? And what can we, how can we, we be wise and help ourselves work through that? So empowering our students is, is important. And I will also go into the fact where, look, there may be times where there is a bullying situation and we do have to be just as proactive. But, you know, and again, being clear that bullying has the goal of continuously hurting, harming or humiliating a particular student over a course of time. Typically there can be an imbalance of power, it could be an older kid, a bigger kid. There's so many other things, dynamics there that again, we wanna take the time to um, ensure that we, we truly understand what's happening. Um, and the example they give here is the student wants to join the computer club um, and John calls him a geek. Um, John also then convinces other kids in the group to call him a geek, right? So now they're ganging up on this kid. He's gained power over outnumbering him, um, outnumbering Dan, right? And so now over time, he's labeled him and called him a name. And now the kids are no longer calling him a Dan, they're calling him a geek, right? So it's continual, perpetual, and then that can carry on. So for parents, I think it's really important to understand those differences. Um, that clarity can go a really long way with your kids as well because and for for you right you're upset and you're like wait now what kind of situation do we have here and when you do that for yourself you're also helping your 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 little one at home too um and then lastly uh addressing wait, this little zoom thing is in my way <laughs> addressing concerns at home collaborative problem solving we want to collaboratively problem solve where we can. Um, and I think it's important for teachers, parents to know like, where, who do I go to and when, right? Um, first, I'd like to say, I'm gonna even skip my own little order here and say that Mr. Makora and my phone line email always open. Like, please feel free to ne never feel as parents that like you have to go to the teacher first or something like that. But I do wanna say that please always feel free to call us, but it, it, there is, much to be said about um, empowering um, our students with some self-advocacy. I would like to start with where students um, communicate with their teachers first, like that should be the first thing. And it could be like as simple as your kids come home, they're upset and say, well, you know what? It's important for your teacher to know this. And it's important for your teacher to hear it from you because once the parent comes in right now, the, there's that dynamic shift and the student is allowing the parent to come in. And sometimes we need that, but I think it's important just to have in the back of your mind that it is great to empower your kid to speak to the teacher um, first. And you, a parent can simply do that by emailing the teacher, right? Like this happened, I'm encouraging, um, you know, Sam to come speak to you about this first, and then we can follow up. That's just your way of helping your student gain that that um, trust with their teachers and you're still a part of the process too. Um, you also wanna inform your teacher of this, right? Provides opportunity to partner with the teacher and collaboratively plan next steps. So now you guys are collaborating, could be behind the scenes, but your student is also involved, right? Uh, assess concerns that may need to be addressed further with an administrator. So that teacher part is really big. And then the administrators, there's nothing better than a team, right? If we need to start making a team around the situation, we want to get the parent, teacher, parent feedback along with students. Their feedback is important too, depending on the conflict, the, the level of the conflict, right? Bullying, we're, everyone's involved, including the school psychology team, which is the next step. So again, your students first should report to the teacher. You should report to the teacher as well. It'll definitely come to administration. I think as a team, it's really strong for all of us to um, start unpacking what's happening and creating next steps together. Uh, and then uh, it may mean that we may have to get the school psychology team involved. I think it's important for parents to know that um, we have um, designated school psychologists per grade. So grades kindergarten through second grade. Mr. Alex Kelly is the school psychologist. I put his email address there. Feel free to reach out to him. He's a wonderful, wonderful resource to us. Um, in grades three through five, we have Dr. Lewis, who's phenomenal as well. And then uh, we have the one and only Dr. Joyce Vestola, who's incredible. She runs our care program and she honestly can, you can reach out to her on any grade level if you'd like. Um, so really that's it. I, um, you know, it's a matter of 
starting with our DBT skills, validate, 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 and then kind of figure out what's happening. And then from there, you're empowering your student when you can, if you feel like it's damaging, then, then you as a parent want to reach out to teacher, administrator, school psychologist. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Vestola. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Rakia. You're welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, it's nice. I was going to say it's nice to see everybody, but I can't see anybody. All I can see is this uh, slide in front of me. So, um, so this is just an a overview of how we handle conflict resolution, both in our care lessons and certainly in the classroom and in uh, Joe and Rakia's office, right? And this approach is really based on evidence-based behavior therapy. You've heard this again and again in DBT and our care program, we have four modules. First is mindfulness, emotional regulation, distress tolerance, and interpersonal effectiveness. We are currently in the interpersonal effectiveness zone, okay? So we are talking a lot. And uh, let me backtrack by saying we're always weaving in the other skills and the other modules as we talk. But uh, certainly now we're, we're talking about how can we get along with others? How can we get what we want from others? And let me backtrack a little to say that I've been there, right? My, if my, when my kids came home and told me about an indiscretion with another kid, I would get my, my, my parent claws out. Like, oh, I wanted to go down to that school and yeah, right? And that's normal. And my kids sometimes would say to me, mom, 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 right? They, the first and foremost, we validate. Now, I want to remind you, validation doesn't mean that we agree with what happened. Validation only means that we put ourselves in their shoes and say, oh my God, that sounds so upsetting. It sounds like you were really felt you humiliated, whatever it is they're bringing to you. Let me backtrack by saying that it's important to realize that recess where a lot of conflicts come up, which makes sense, right? Is, is like a, a laboratory for social skills. Yes, we have aids. Yes, they're supervised. And yes, it's less structured, right? So they're trying out their social skills. They're learning new social skills. They're learning how to get in the game. They're learning how to handle conflict and how to make friendships. And just like any other skill in life, they're going to make mistakes. They, they don't learn to walk unless they fall down lots of times. Learning a bike, fall, learning how to ride a bike, falling down, learning math, tons of mistakes. The same applies to the program, to the playground and to social skills. Our kids are sometimes going to say less than kind things to each other in the heat of the moment. And it's our responsibility to help them realize, to help them get in touch with how they're feeling and find better, more functional ways of getting along with people. And we, we actively try to empower kids when they're in a conflict to to learn skills to work out conflicts. And we're currently talking about give skills, which means being gentle with people, showing interest in what the other person has to say, validating and feeling empathic. In kindergarten, we're talking more about what is a friend? Um, how, do we how do we know? that someone is our friend? Is it okay to wanna play alone? Do you have to play with the same friends? You know, general concepts about friendships and how to get along. Um, and then finally, we are really emphasizing cope ahead skills. Okay, so this happened on the playground. You know, we've learned from it, you know, um, it, it, 
we, we don't want to shame kids for their behavior. We want to, them to understand what happened and let's move forward. You're going to be in another kickball game where you guys are going to have a tremendous argument about who's safe and who's out. How are we going to handle this going forward? What skills are we going to use? And that's called cope ahead skills. So I want to shift because Alana also asked me to talk about the end of the year. You may be noticing that your kids are a little more squirrely this time of year. We certainly notice this at school and the kids notice it in themselves. And there's lots of reasons that kids are, let's say, more energetic, if you will, at this time of year. And some of it really has to do with change. This change, change is not easy. It's a part of life and we learn how to navigate it. And, uh, you know, doing this for so many years, I've noticed that it's sort of like the stages of grief with Kubler-Ross. Now, obviously there's been shifts in that, in that there's no like specific, you know, stages, but we see sort of patterns of it. The first is, and we all do this, teachers do this too, denial. Oh my God, I can't believe there's six weeks left to school. Oh my God, I can't believe it's in the middle of May. Like, it, like a shock, right? Then I find that kids start to get a little bit more irritated with each other. They sort of get angry. They're a little more cranky. They will tell you that they are more cranky and tired this time of year. Sometimes it, it happens, you know, with staff too. We've been together for so long and under such incredibly stressful circumstances. I mean, think about yourselves, you know, when you go on vacation after a while, you know, you could get pretty cranky being in the house together. So there's some anger. Then there's some, then we see sadness, right? I'm going to miss my teacher. I'm going to miss my friends. Um, you know, um, what is fourth, you know, what is the new year going to be like? And finally, sort of a feeling of acceptance. Let me say too, that the kids are very excited too, because a lot of them are anticipating a different summer than they've ever had before. And that's where we use mindfulness and we say, well, how do we stay back in the moment here at school? Because we still have, you know, considerable amount of school ahead. So how do you help um, your kids with this? You talk about their feelings about the end of the year. And one of the things that I think is a great help is to help is to have your kids express gratitude. And by that, what I really love is to have them make cards for their teachers or for end people who they felt helped them this year. Have them make the card, have them draw a picture and then have them write or draw inside. What did you, what do you want to say to this, this teacher? What do you want them to know? What did you like about them specifically? Teachers love this. And why? Because we're teaching our kids how to express gratitude. You know, that these were, these are important people in our life and it's always wonderful to let them know. So I don't know, I hope I've covered just about everything. Oh, you all also wanna emphasize what I call bright spots. Tell me about the year. What do you feel best about the year? What did you learn this year? Um, we, I had a kid stand up in first grade today and say, well, I'm not, I'm too big for first grade now. Um, they're really trying on their, you know, new thoughts about the, the year ahead. Oh, and the last thing, by the end of next week, all of your kids would have uh, gotten up and done uh, and participated in a go noodle singing I'm Still Standing. And I'm emphasizing how resilient they've been, what they've coped with, and, and their strength. So last but not least, Alana, 
Thank you for your wonderful leadership. Thank you for coordinating uh, with us and always giving me feedback about what, you know, what's going on in the community. I look forward to new leadership and I wanna wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful summer. God knows we deserve this summer, right? Thank you. Questions? Thank you so much, Dr. Vastola. I'm checking out the chat. Um, people are just, you know, sending you love and appreciation and saying that you're a gift to the kids, which, which oh, you are. Thank you. And Miss Adams and Dr. Vastola, both of you, that was so valuable as parents. But what we're most grateful for is how thoughtful you are about teaching our children how to handle those situations. I think we're all grateful for the idea that they're being empowered to figure this out themselves. So thank you both so much for being here. So we are so lucky to have our superintendent, Dr. Bonasano, with us. But Dr. Bonasano, if you don't mind just bearing with us for a couple minutes, um, we're going to, okay, thank you. We're going to go live to the high school auditorium where our elementary school students are getting ready for their big weekend for performances. And there she is, our talented director, Alicia Acker, who is a literal miracle worker. Um, she takes over a hundred kids and somehow they put on a musical in two weeks. Um, so Alicia, how's it going? They're good. They were all on stage ready to say hi, but they're all in dismissal now. So I'll let those who are here say hi. hi. Are you having fun? Yes. Yeah. Did they come see your show? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're very excited. They were all waiting to, to get on to say hi to everybody. Um, they're very excited. They, they would love people to come see. I think we still have a few tickets left. They're doing awesome. We really have a great, uh, talented cast. They always amaze me how they come together in a matter of like eight or nine rehearsals, but they're doing fantastic. And we also, I know another message when I'm just for the middle school, don't forget, uh, we have auditions for the middle school production Monday and Tuesday. So we're going to roll straight from the elementary into the middle school. So we're, we're very excited. These kids are excited. They're excited for next year. I already have the fourth graders prepping because they know next year they get the big parts and they are ready. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys can come to the show and um the kids are really really excited and I think they've had an absolutely terrific couple of weeks so Ms. Lisa, thank you so much for all you do but also just quickly you're so articulate talking about like the value of you know what the kids learn through taking part in it so tell us like what you think your the top two things that they take Sorry. away from the experience um, I started this company because it was about building self-confidence and self-esteem in children through theater. And I would say the biggest thing that I've watched over the years is kids that maybe don't have that confidence or don't feel like they fit in somewhere. And in a matter of eight or nine rehearsals, they're crying at the cast party because they finally felt like they fit in. They did something right. They found somewhere where they belonged. And the difference in their confidence and, and just the way they hold themselves, it's night and day. Uh, Trisha Murray had the chance to see it. And even she said last year, she was shocked at, at the difference in the kids and how much it affected them. And they even get job skills because they, they learn, they come into auditions. It's like walking into a job interview. So I try to sneak as many life skills in there as I can. So even though it's a theater experience, they're gaining huge, huge positive life lessons and life skills. And again, increased self-esteem and confidence, which is crucial. I mean, these ages and going into middle school and, and the end of elementary, those are tough years. And I think it's very important if kids can kind of find who they are and, and gain that confidence and self-esteem. So I, I've found, I, I've watched it help thousands of kids. So I'm, I'm very fortunate that I, I love what I do and I love the positive changes it makes in children. So Thank you so much. That's it. We can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, we can't wait to see the show. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Okay, look Dr. forward to seeing you guys this weekend. <laughs> All right, bye. Oh. Bye. <laughs> Dr. Montesano, thank you for being so patient. Over to you. Over thank to you. you.
Uh, thanks. Can you all hear me okay? All right, great. Thank you. It's very hard to top that. And I don't appreciate being uh, bought on after the kids. That's really difficult in the great presentation by the elementary school team. You know, we're very fortunate to have the team that we do in place. So guys, well done and thank you. Um, before I begin, just a very brief update, Alana, thank you for your leadership and participation in the PTA, as well as all your executive committee members and everyone who participates in PTA it really is very meaningful to us. And we really can't do what we do with our school and our children without the support that we receive from the community. So thank you very much for all the work that you put into uh, helping us do our jobs and, and really making Bronxville what it is. Uh, we very much appreciate that. Uh, just very, very quickly, as um, particularly at the elementary school, as you all know, we're still seeing an uptick in the COVID number of COVID cases uh, recently. And while we're certainly um, going to get through the end of the year and we'll, we'll uh, uh, get through the best we can, we just want to remind people to be as vigilant as you can and just be careful and, and uh, wise out there, if you will, um, because it is challenging and we know yeah, more and more people are getting it with this new variant again. And, you know, I see it as something that we all have to live through and manage through as we continue on, not let it control our lives, certainly, but uh, just, you know, be smart about what we do and how we go about it. Um, we continue to test those who want to get tested on a weekly basis. Um, last week, we ran at about a 5% infection rate based on that, which is about what the state is going uh, as well. Uh, we were using the take-home test, uh, the rapid tests, uh, as visually as we can. The middle school uh, students took them right before they went on their trip. Uh, anytime there's a break, we're asking people to do it as well. So if anybody needs a rapid test or would like to have one at home for your own protection, please let us know. We do have uh, a bunch of them available <clears throat> that we'd uh, certainly be happy to share with our community. Um, from the board perspective, um, as you know, we have our budget vote on Tuesday night. We do encourage everyone to come out and vote, please. Um, we depend on uh, the, the community supporting the budget to continue our programs. We also have our board of ed elections, as I'm sure you're aware of. Um, uh, so just come out and vote and, and um, we, we appreciate whatever support you provide for us. Um, you may have seen Arlene Thomas, the board president's email uh, or note to go, that went home to everyone regarding the superintendent search. <clears throat> but if you haven't, just a very quick update. They um, finished the deadline for the applications to be in. I believe there were 35 applicants, which is a pretty good number given the, the mid-year opening, if you will. Um, they are, the search consultants are meeting with the Board of Ed in a, an executive session on Wednesday evening to review the candidates, review all the applications, uh, and select a slate of semifinalists to be interviewed by the board. Those interviews will take place next weekend. I think it's the 20th and 21st, Saturday and Sunday. Um, <clears throat> the current sitting board is inviting those newly elected board members to participate in the interviews as well. We think that's a real important thing to do, given the fact that that superintendent, whoever uh, the person is, um, will have to work with that new board. So uh, they will be intimately involved in that. Uh, school is a busy place right now, as you can imagine, with the end of the year upon us. Um, seniors or juniors are doing, and some sophomores are doing AP exams for the last couple of weeks, a very stressful time. Our eighth graders down in Williamsburg. Uh, so there's a lot going on. And, you know, it's nice because there's a lot of excitement and activity. Um, and it gets us kind of back to normal again, if you will. Uh, we look forward to seeing parents back in our buildings. We know the art show is coming next week. Um, and we would like to welcome you all with open arms and get to see the place if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and that's it. So thank you again for everything you do for us, the support, and uh, look forward to a smooth end of the year with all of you. But if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer any of them. Thanks so much, Dr. Montesano. We'll keep an eye on the chat. Okay. okay. Um, now we have an update from the Bronxville School Foundation. Amy Kraus is here, and Amy's also going to be the president of the whole PTA next year. Amy, thank you for being here. Thanks, Alana. So I'm happy to report that the Foundation Board approved a great slate of spring grant requests from administrators, faculty, and students on Monday night. 
The grants are subject to Board of Ed approval at their next meeting, but we're thrilled with the array of initiatives in the arts, athletics, and academic, academic disciplines across the whole school. Thanks to everyone for all of their innovative ideas, and many thanks to everyone who's donated to support the Foundation's community drive this year. For those of you who haven't yet donated, please consider making a donation before June 30. As president-elect of the PTA, I have had the opportunity to sit on the foundation board this year, and I'm so grateful to them for all that they do to support our kids in our school. They're truly a part of the reason why I think this community is just so special. So please consider donating. Thanks, Alana. Thank you, Amy. Tara Hansen is also here tonight. Starting next month, she'll be running these Zooms as the new elementary school chair. Tara? Hi. Um, thanks, Alana. Thanks, everybody. Um, it's been great shadowing Alana um, this year. I'm very excited to take the reins from her for next year. I have two children. Uh, Tommy's in kindergarten and Bridget is in third grade. Um, we've lived in Brownsville for almost eight years, and this is our fourth year as parents in the elementary school. Um, when I think about all the different reasons that people volunteer, um, whatever the reason is, um, it truly makes a difference. Um, basically, everyone who's spoken tonight, somehow this has come back to um, parent involvement. And none of this would be possible without the parents of volunteer. Um, I think um, Miss Leisha coming on and explaining about the play is such a great example like yes we hire her to come in and put on a play in two weeks but there are so many parents in the background making that play possible and without those volunteers it just wouldn't happen and um, the administration does a lot with the play as well but um the the parents are a really big part of that um there are a lot of different committees like on the PTA in general, but there's also, you know, a lot that are within the elementary school council. And I just want to quickly highlight those because I don't think people realize necessarily how many different things the PTA does within the elementary school. Um, of course, we have the executive committee and then we have a chair for each grade, but we also have a committee that works on the picture day. We have kindergarten orientation, the yearbook, the art fair exhibits that are going to happen next week. Uh, the book fair that just happened this week. We have character and community, um, a lecture series that has brought in great authors for our children to um, experience throughout the year. Um, also, um, of course, the play, and then the lost and found, <laughs> which I think, you know, definitely needs to be noted. Um, there are particular areas where we are still looking for volunteers for next year. Um, definitely the, the theater and arts, the play, if that's, um, there's so many different ways that a parent can, can be involved in that process. Um, the yearbook can always use an extra set of hands. Um, Rebecca Todd has been uh, chairing that committee for years and thank God she has five children so she can just continue to do it and she's willing to do that. Um, the art fair exhibits that are happening next week will need parents to help um, step in and, and coordinate that process with the art teachers. Um, and then the book fair that happened this week. Um, there are tons of shifts for parents to um, assist with the book fair. Um, also, there are a couple committees that are new this year that were really the ideas that parents had. Um, so if you have any ideas um, definitely encourage you to come reach out to me. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat afterwards. Um, a couple of those new committees were the special people day and that was um, a, a great idea that Alana had that happened this year. And then the happiness committee, there were a group of parents that came together and said, you know, we want what our kids, our kids have gone through in the last couple of years, we want to try to bring some of that joy back into elementary school. Um, so those are just a couple examples. Um, I'll leave it there, but definitely please reach out to me um, for anything. Thank you. Thanks, Tara. That was great. I'm so excited to hear from another wonderful parent volunteer, Justine McInerney, who's helped to plan a brand new PTA event, the Arts Festival. Justine? Oh, you're still on mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. 
So as if we didn't have enough on the calendar, we have a festival next week um, celebrating the arts. Uh, we are actually part of the PTA. We're a new part of it. We're the Arts Council. And we're meant to advocate for children who are interested, our students who are interested in the arts, whether it's performing, visual, dance, music, orchestra. So the festival will be very comprehensive, but it will all be outdoors. And it will be highlighting the art show, which as Dr. Montesano said, it's, is back. So it's going to take place on Monday night. Everything is after school. Everything is out on the front lawn. We'll have Walter's hot dogs coming on uh, Tuesday night with a nice picnic and you'll be able to take in some live performances. We have a band, we have a ballerina, we have a chorus coming. Um, and then you can go in and see the art show. On top of all of that, we have a public art installation where it's going to be these big letters that say BXV Arts and each student can come up and put a sticker on a mosaic that has been um, drawn by one of the parents who's an artist um, and that can be used year after year we'll uplight it at night so you're going to see these signs around school so just take a look at that that gives you all the information on when the festivities are happening we've also have things up on Instagram and a big PTA um, email went out on I think it was two days ago with the schedule on it as well and then just in kind of again highlighting the arts we've put together some new art apparel that will be sold um, for kids who you know are maybe not on the athletic um, trained for school, but they're interested in the performing arts and the visual arts. And we have little car magnets that say Bronxville Arts. So um, it's the start and we're really excited. We hope you all come out and join us. Thank you. Thanks, Justine. That's really exciting. Um, if Before we go to our last guest, Mr. Mercora, can I read you a question from the chat? You're on mute. I actually just answered it in the chat. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> you know, I think it's actually the something that everyone would like to hear. Do you want to? So let me just quickly say what they asked. Um, sure. My, my son's in the third grade and he's kind of bummed that he couldn't be a third grade buddy this year. Is that something we can consider for the fourth graders next year? Yeah, we're actually been talking about that as, as how to make up that experience possibly for next year and double up maybe with the grades but uh that's something i think we're going to be able to pull off and uh look forward to next year so they get the full effect of it and then do you want to also answer about um you know child said that pe has been inside all year is there any chance yeah i mean i'll circle back on that we have had p outside throughout the year so i mean maybe it's that particular class section or grade but i definitely follow up with that one and uh, circle back we have had pe outside plenty of times that that i can tell out there and did some PE observations outside, as a matter of fact, on the ground. So maybe, but definitely get back on that specific topic. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, lastly, we are going to hear um, from a committee in the PTA called the New Families Committee. They do really important work to welcome families who move here between first and 12th grade when there isn't otherwise a formal foundation to welcome them into town. So Jennifer Corella is here um, to ask for your help with the work that they do next year. Jen, can I pass it over to you? Of course, thank you. Yeah, so I'm following in Tara's footsteps here asking for help. Um, but so as Alana said, the new families committee is all people coming into the school for first grade through 12th grade. Um, Carly Patterson oversees the entire committee but next year I'll be the coordinator for the elementary school. Um, so what we do, and I'm looking for volunteers, right? Just put that out there. What we do in the elementary school is the two big things is that we set people up, the new families with buddy families. So ideally somebody who's gonna be in the same grade the next year, um, ideally same gender. And we also have a, um, an orientation for the new families. Usually, I don't know if we know when it is yet, Mr. McCora, but um, usually right before school starts, we have something. So the new family committee, the responsibilities, we have reps for each grade um, and the reps are the ones who match families and set up the buddies. So we need some volunteers for that. Specifically, I need somebody for next year who's going into first grade, second grade and fourth grade, if anybody is willing to do that. Again, it's really just over the summer, matching up you know, new families with a buddy family. Um, then we need people to help with the orientation. Ideally, the same people who are reps would help, but I'll take whoever is willing to do anything, whatever you want to do, just let me know. 
And if you don't want to be on the committee, but you just want to be a buddy family, let me know that too. And it'll make life easier for the reps. They'll have some names that they know they can reach out to. So it's really fun. It's just meeting new people. A buddy family just goes out for coffee or goes to the playground and has a play date. It's easy, just welcoming people in so that new people can see how great our community is and our school is. So thank you. Jen, you already have a volunteer in the chat. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, that, that's it for tonight. Thank you all so much for taking time out of a beautiful spring evening to be here with us. I hope you feel like you got a little bit of a glimpse of what's going on this spring and more reasons to be excited that your kids go to school here. Thank you all. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.